<laughs> Mini biking ain't easy. It ain't easy. And, and the thing is, that's a good name for a podcast. Heck yeah. yeah. You should probably write that down. What up? Don't you rap? You rap. Yeah, yeah. All I, right, I'm go ahead. Spit just spit a few bars. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Misfits, we coming to steal the show. GPS 180, here we go. We the fastest team on the block. You better come right now because you know we ain't stopped. Uh. <laughs> oh, go to Power Sports. Oh, That's where you get all your parts. Uh. <laughs> go ahead and just throw one of the mics off the table now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, please don't. <laughs> Wow, what was that, $300, that, that was quite the intro. All right. That was really, that, that is the only time someone has effectively rapped yeah, during we, the intro. I poorly say the, the same two lines over and over, and I, I'm yet to write it down. But <laughs> I digress. This is Jason over at Go Power Sports. This is Mini Biking Ain't Easy, a podcast where we talk about mini bikes, go-karts, power sports, a little bit of everything. I am always joined by my main man, Zane, keeping us in the lane. I got Bernie's on the ones, twos, and threes. And we got our main man, Mr. Mason Pittman from the Mini Bike Misfits. What, what? What's up, y'all? What's up, what's up, what's up? What state did you come from? We come all the way from Georgia. Uh, we're based out of about 20 minutes out of Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, now when you say us, Mini Bike Misfits is a little group of y'all, right? Yes, sir. Mini Bike Misfits is a team that consists of about 12 people, and we're a traveling mini bike racing. Nice. Now, you are in town for what event? The one and only Go Power Sports 180, baby. Third what, annual. What? Uh, <laughs> I, 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 it, it made it into the episode. Gotcha. Awesome. That's So, the GPS 180, it's our third annual. How well did you do at the second GPS 180? Well, uh, me and my partner came in second place overall and full suspension as well and uh man i think we rocked it we had a great bike a lot of go power sports parts on there uh i think it was built by paul and someone else uh they did a really good job of building that bike uh this year we've got a little something extra but uh it didn't come back with us it stayed at home but uh i think we got something that y'all cooked up that oh. like okay so are you able to tell us what you're going to be racing well what we're going to be racing is the uh 212 megamoto nice. and um the pro with the front rear hydraulic brakes and we've also added the go power sports rear suspension kit on that thing yeah this gave it every bit of the beans and juice that it needs because i mean we got a stage two sorry that was loud <laughs> i know i feel really bad about that one guys <laughs> we got a stage two tillison on there as well which uh is gave it all the power that it needs i mean um with the swing arm kit the bike and the, the motor i mean i'm feeling really good about this year uh, it's 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 nice and those who want to know how to put a mini bike rear suspension on, you can check out Mini Bike Misfits yeah, YouTube. Check they out. just put one on, yeah, right? Yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, we actually just dropped a video this morning. So um, uh, you go check us out, uh, Mini Bike Misfits. Oh, it's over here, right? No, I thought we're putting links down below now. Oh, dang. Now, do you want to give a shout out to your teammate last year real quick? Absolutely. Mr. Daniel Cooney, he was not able to make it here this year. He's oh. got work and family things going on, but he's called every day since we've been on this trip and checked in with us and given us uh, awesome dad jokes <laughs> <laughs> and words of encouragement. Nice. Yeah, Cooney, we miss you. Uh, yes. Hopefully you are at home well with, with the family. We will see you next year, though. Yeah. Yeah, and I could have did without him. I got to say, um, this 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 track is one of those tracks that if you do it solo, you, you are a man or a woman that has a lot of heart and a lot of stamina because one lap, I was – dusted and i needed the whole lap that he was taking to recover for my next lap bang and uh, i just got to say you know shout out to bobby hammond and his partner because you know they beat us and i gave it all i had there's a lot of tough competition out there but you know that's that's what we come for you know we, we want that competition for the gps 180 would you since you are traveling racers is the gps 180 the toughest race you guys do in the year or are there other ones that you find that are more difficult or more challenging I would say that it is the toughest track, the toughest mm. race, yeah. um, the biggest battle of stamina and guts that, that yeah. you can probably have because 
a lot of these other tracks we go to, I would say being able to, to stick to the track, have a setup that's going to be good to race and stuff like that. Can't There can be a lot of trouble in there. You know, you can wreck, get hurt and stuff like that and that kind of troubles. But we're doing, you know, 10, 15 laps. I mean, you know, your leg might hurt or whatever, you know, might, might be a little stiff, but what you're doing out here is I'm doing like CrossFit or something like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's, it's insane. He's not saying that every other race is basically tie bow to our CrossFit, <laughs> but he kind of said it folks. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, it's a, it, I mean, it's a true homage, homage to the gambler 500 Amish, mini bike yeah. to the Amish yeah. and their mini bike races that they put on, uh, because we loved going through their beautiful scenery up in Oregon. So we don't have Oregon trees and whatnot, but we have some Texas trails out here, and a lot of them are basically deer trails, hog trails that we just kind of put a bulldozer through and said, yeah, let's follow this track and see where it leads us. So I'm glad that you like the track. You're going to like it even more because it's even longer this year. And uh, Taylor and the, and the boys have been putting in a ton of hours, like yeah. weeks of time getting this track prep. So you're definitely going to love it. Yeah, it's like every berm has been lovingly crafted. Yeah. That's it's beautiful. I, I can't wait to see it because I, I know, you know, I loved it last year because I love the fact that there is no part of this track that's the same as any other part of the track. Oh, I yeah. mean, you know where you're at on this track. Yeah. It's not like, oh, where am I? You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, you know, like, oh, oh, here comes Pucker Up Buttercup. And, yeah. Oh, here comes Buck and Bronco. Like, you know where you're at. And uh, and that's one thing I really like about it. It is it is not a regular track. It is it is yeah. definitely it, one in its own. Well, I can't wait for you to see the yard signs I put up on all the sections then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so you have a new uh, partner, teammate? This yeah, year? yeah, I, I've got a. Uh, well, he's not so new to the team, but he's new to being a Go Power Sports and AD partner to me, and that's going to be my brother-in-law Dakota. He nice. actually traveled out here with my sister Savannah. And, shout out uh, to Dakota! Oh, yeah, Whoa. big shout out to him. And uh, we always call him the second place kid because uh, anytime he ever comes in races, it's like me and him. And then you know he just always keeps getting second place. And so Dang. we've nicknamed him that. And so this year he 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 doesn't have to run against me. So I think he's going to be the first place kid with me. I like hearing. I that. like that, man. No, that's good. I Talking like that. smack. Wow. Okay. No, that was like yeah. It was like it was like a real gentle smack talk. <laughs> Hey, he just keeps saying it's not if we're going to win, it's when we're going to win. There bam, you go, bam, man. Bam. Uh, wah, wah, wah. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, My screen went away. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. It's okay. It happens to everyone sometime. <laughs> <laughs> you go ahead, Jay. <laughs> um, so... Um, if you have not checked out... First off, if you haven't checked out Mini Bike Misfits, shame on you. You should probably go check it out. Um, but... Mason, tell us a little bit about you, man. Like, wh where does Mason Pittman come from? What's the tale? Well, uh, you know, I'm just a regular old guy. Uh, you know, I'm an industrial plumber by trade. I kind of got into mini biking, uh, you know, just as a way to kind of ease my mind, be able to get, relieve the stresses of the world. I mean, I think we all kind of run into those kind of things, you know, that like you carry stuff home and you kind of want to get rid of it. You know what I mean? And uh, mini biking kind of became that for me. I was able to come home and kind of just tinker with my bikes. And, you know, when you get them fixed, you sit there and take it for a ride and you get that you know, feeling about you. And, uh, I guess that's where I kind of started off in the mini bike stuff and how I got into there. But man, um, myself, I guess I've stayed in Georgia most of my life. I'm a Georgia boy. I, I like doing country boy stuff. I like going fishing. I like, you know, camping in the woods. I like going, taking my dogs out and, you know, just pretty much hanging out and chilling, man, with my friends. And uh, I'm not, not too complicated when it comes to stuff. I think the mini biking part is probably the most complicated thing about me. Yeah. <laughs> and how long ago would you say mini biking really came into your life? Well, uh, we got a little sand. We've been on the scene since 2018. Okay, so, nice. You know, oh, I like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we've been doing the thing since 2018, and that's when I got my first bike. It's it's really a whole story about how I got that, and it's actually pretty wholesome. Um, Let McKenzie. me know. <laughs> so, Mackenzie, she actually... Uh, Back it up. Mackenzie <sighs> is... Uh, that is my girlfriend, uh, what, what? Mini Bike McKenzie. Uh, <laughs> from what I understand, she's one of the fastest or the fastest mini bike racing woman that I've ever seen. Okay, Whoa. so uh, if we have any people that want to test that, you're more than welcome because um, we take call outs all the time. Yeah, so, and we like to travel. So, uh, <laughs> <but clears throat> Kenzie, she had saw that I was really interested in a mini bike, and um, as she knows, I'm kind of hard to buy stuff for. And so, for my birthday, she decided she was going to go buy me a, a mini bike while I was at work. And, I pulled up and she wasn't there and I was like, that's kind of funny. Then she pulls up right behind me in the driveway and I'm like, oh, okay, what's going on? Where, where, you know, what you doing? And she's like, you gonna help me get it out? And she's got this huge smile on her face and I'm like, oh, what did you buy? <laughs> 
And so we open up the back of her car and she has like this moto box that looks like it had been through like 15 trailer parks. <laughs> like it like was painted like so many different colors because I had to literally take every one of them off to get it down to bare metal when I powder coated it. And uh, it was it was a piece of crap, man. It had a really clapped out uh, five horsepower Briggs and Stratton on there. I mean, I don't even think it had a brake. I mean, you know, nice. it, it was it, it, it had a tiller tire on the back. It was all dry rotted, full of. Well, you'd hear the uh, the stuff slushing around in there. <laughs> oh no! Flat. And uh, you know, but the thing, it hauled butt though. I mean, yeah. it really did. I mean, and uh, I was kind of mad. I'm gonna lie. Like you know, I mean, uh, and she said, "Whatever, I'll ride it." And she really jumps on it and rode it straight up a tree. And I was like, that thing is awesome. Let me get on it. And so then I wrote wait, it. Wait, 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 wait. Can we talk a second? Straight up a tree? Yeah. It was, like wrecked it? <laughs> yeah, she wrecked it. Okay. Oh, damn. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, no, no. She like literally rode yeah, <laughs> yeah, perpendicular to the ground. It was a giant was oak nuts. tree. <laughs> and, the, and the roots kind of like, you know, when the big oak trees, how they go out at the bottom like that. Oh, yeah. And like, she just jumped on it. And like, I don't think she'd ever even rode a motorcycle in her life or anything. Like, so this was her first ride on a mini bike or yeah. anything in her life. And she just jumps on it and hits it. And, you know, it had that Motovox, like, stock rear gear on there, like, yeah. 74 teeth. And it just, like, room, like, went straight, <laughs> hit the tree and, like, just ramped up the roots and, like, went probably four feet up the tree and just, like, fell off and wrecked out. And, you know, she And jumped. you said, let me have a crack yeah, at this. Yeah, instantly, I was like, yeah, I'm riding that now. Like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's funny thing is that's actually the same bike that I race today. Oh, really? My bike, Smoke, the one that I okay. race all my flat track yeah. stuff on. And, uh... You know, it's just really funny because I was kind of, like I said, I was a little salty. I was like, I wanted a doodle bug. I had like a specific, you know, bike in mind, what I wanted. And, you know, the Motovox really wasn't it, you know what I mean? But it ended up being exactly what I needed. Yeah. And, and it, the best flat track racing bike frame, you know, that, that I think is, you know, on the earth right now. Nice. You know, until you guys make another one. It's okay. better, you <laughs> For <know>? sure. <laughs> like, yeah. So do you also ride motorcycles then? Yes, sir. I, uh, I've been riding, I guess I've been riding motorcycles since probably about 10 years old. Um, nice. And, uh, you know, my dad got me, you know, a little little dirt bike and stuff and started kind of riding it for a little while. And then and I got into, you know, riding Harleys and stuff like that as I got a little bit mm -hmm. older and kind of stayed into riding Harleys. And I have two Harleys now. And the funniest thing about it is that I don't ride. People, they come over to my house and they know I'm mini bike Mason yeah. and they see the mini bikes, but then they're surprised to see that I've got two really nice Harleys. Mm -hmm. And they're like, man, like what? <laughs> like, why do you ride these mini bikes? And I was like, you know, it's obviously people that have never rode a mini bike that ask me this. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, well, ride a mini bike and then you'll, you'll see. Yeah. And, uh, you know, more than likely, you know, on a mini bike, I'm not going to get hit by a car and get ran over and killed. I had, when I was 22 years old, I hit a lady in her door at 50 miles an hour on my Sportster. Oh, no. And, uh, you know, it almost killed me, man. And, uh, you know, I couldn't walk for almost a year. And, you know, I went through a lot of, you know, trouble with that. And, uh, you know, I don't want to say it scared me away from riding on the road, but it definitely made it a lot less appealing to me. Mm. I still ride on the road, but I just, you know, if, if I feel like I want to ride, I'm blessed enough to have maybe i was probably 500 miles of trails by my house nice and i'll go jump on my mega moto i'll go jump on my uh my trail master or something you know and i'll just go ride you know what i mean i'll go ride for hours i see nothing but deer and squirrels and trees and um it's so much more appealing to me than seeing you know a dotted line and a possible old lady door Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah have, no doors have, out there in the woods. No. We have footage of those trails. We'll put them up right here. Oh no, Bernie. <laughs> Do you really have? Them? Yeah, we we rode with me, Paul, and Taylor. Went down to see them. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you guys did go on a little ride. Yeah, I mean, you know, we had to. You know. Wow. So if I came out with my bike, you would show me five hundred miles. You don't even have to come with your bike. You you get me set up with the bike. Just fly out. Okay. We've got some awesome bikes that we've built from the ground up from Go Power Sports. Nice. And they are rippers okay? okay and i'm telling you man fly out i'll come pick you up from the airport perfect and we'll ride all day long dude set that date let's go yes, sir. Boom, let's boom. go okay i'm putting it on the calendar yeah see you mini bike mason that's the sound folks of there you we riding go. it down i just wrote it down yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay so you said 2018 is when you guys started the channel yes sir did that start right after you got that first mini bike or when did you guys decide like, oh yeah, we're going to start filming this? Well, I, I wouldn't say the channel started, it probably maybe started in like maybe 2019 because at first, I mean, we just started off as, well, really by myself and then I, I invited Daniel Cooney over like, hey man, yeah. come ride these power lines by my house and I, this is where I lived in another place 
And so I was on my bike and we're riding like these power line trails and I'm like on this little like moto box, just like yeah, getting man. beat to death, like no suspension or anything. He was like, yeah, that thing's pretty cool, man. And, and I was like, well, here, ride it. And so I rode his XR and he rode it and he fell in love. And I think like that day he went home, got on Facebook Marketplace, found a doodle bug, bought it. Nice. Came back to my house the next day and was like, let's ride. And so <laughs> then we started riding around. And then we started kind of talking to some friends who we saw also had gotten mini bikes. Mm -hmm. And we said, hey, y'all want to race? And they were like, yeah, sure. We're like, okay, well, let's all build these bikes. Yeah. And we're going to have a, you know, Predator 212 limit. And then we're going to, you know, you can do anything you want, any billet parts, anything, no turbos. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, what, that's, that's all, that was the only rule we had. And we were going to drag race, you know okay, what I mean? So nice. it just, you know, in the neighborhood kind. And so we all did that. It was about seven of us. We all came out there and I actually had got um, a Go Power Sports stage one kit. Um, I think I watched, um, I want to see if it was a cars and cameras video on like how to remove a governor. Yeah. And it's then, crazy how many people's origin story is watching a cars, cars and cameras, and cameras thing. <laughs> and you know what's funny? Like I, back in that day, I actually thought cars and cameras was Go Power Sports. I was like, you know, I mean, like, it was just like that. And I remember the day I found out that they, like, actually weren't y'all. Like, what? They were, like, other people. Like, Your head exploded. You know, how, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, but, you know, so I watched, you know, watched the video, uh, removed my governor, put some 26-pound valve rings in there. Like, I, I put a billet fly on there because I heard the horror stories. Yeah. And um, it still had a stock rod, stock cam, stock head, other than the 26-pound valve rings. And uh, went out there, and I waxed them all, dude. Nice. And, and, like, just uh, obliterated them. And it, then it was like, that was when I really got bit by the racing bug of like, I really like beating people. <laughs> and so, I was like, that's good. Like, you know? <laughs> so then we were like, hey, you know, let's make like a little track. And we, so we made a track next to my house. And it was, I'm talking about very small, like a little bullring style track. And we would just go out there and it started out as, you know, kind of skinny. And we just rode, rode, rode until it mm -hmm. got wider. And we would just go out there and run. And then, I said, man, it'd be so cool if you could race on a track. And so we went to track after track after track after track in Georgia, all these dirt tracks. And they just turned us down. They laughed me out of the door. Just like, you want to race a what? A mini bike. You know what I mean? And yeah. it was just a joke to them. Because they're used to doing go-karts? Yeah, go-karts mostly. Okay. And so, because Georgia's a you know big karting state. Yeah. I guess we're not going to be able to find anything. I searched for mini bike races that were already going on. There was no mini bike races. Mm -hmm. So... I decided I'm going to make some. And so I started to contact, like I said, all the tracks. I finally found a track called MKR. Okay. And it stands for Monticello Kart Racing out of Monticello, Georgia. And uh, I contacted Corey McMichael and told him about what I wanted to do. And they were actually in the middle of building a new track. And they said, well, bring your bike down here. We want to see what you got. Mm -hmm. And so I brought my Motovox down there. And it still had small tires on it and everything, you know. And I think I had the same motor you know what i mean crunk it up they're like hey man that's the same motor we're running our carts and i said yeah you know i said well you know it's just two wheels and they said yeah. well when the track gets finished we'll see how it works and so we came out there and i remember our first time out there they stopped us halfway through our practice and said y'all can't run on the track anymore because y'all are tearing it up that's how I was worried. Like, are you running up this dirt? Or? Well, our sprockets, because oh. we were all on small tire bikes. Yeah. Those big stock sprockets, they were just digging in so hard. Mm -hmm. And so they were making, every time we go around the track, there'd be a line in the yeah. corners. And, you know, the car racers are very finicky about yeah. their dirt tracks. And so someone said, why don't y'all run them right? And we were like, um, I don't know about that, man. <laughs> like, that's weird. And they were like, well, it's either run them right or don't have anywhere to race. Yeah. And so I was like, well, let's try it out. And we tried it out and it worked, you know, and yeah. there was no big difference between right or left us. So we said, let's do it. And so we started doing that. And then when I came to other tracks and I kind of said, hey, look, here's some video. We're doing this here. It started to grow and snowball. Nice. And so once we started doing the videos and I had video evidence that, hey, look, we're out here running this track. and We look great. We're mm -hmm. out here running, you know, 50 miles an hour on this dirt track, you know, and, you know, we're not tearing it up and it's bringing people in and. Um, more more on tracks they just started allowing us and now nice. I have tracks hitting us up saying calling me we, we're on the way here I had a guy call me he wants me to come to I think Minnesota or something you know he was like nice. hey man like you know I want you to come and race and I was like oh whoa man that's like crazy like yeah. to come all the way out there but you know it's just it's growing and I think probably one of the things is because of y'all all the media you're doing this podcast here 
people are finding out that mini biking is something that they can afford and enjoy. You know? well, how does Go Power Sports then empower you? Because it sounds like a more fitting job for you is to be a race promoter. And you throw on these races around the U.S. And then you get a, a bodied league that then scores points at all of yeah. these tracks. And we have a top 100, <laughs> you know, racers from top 100. Yeah. I mean, this seems like a perfect fit for you, does it not? Well, I guess so. It kind of fell into it. Uh, I mean, and I actually kind of had the conversation with Kinsey. I said, you know, there's going to be one day that I'm probably not going to be able to race anymore where I'm going to have to fully just take care of the yeah. racing. And I, I just really hope that's really far in the future. Uh, as, <laughs> as much as I want this to grow, this huge, yeah. I, I still want to be able to race. Yeah. And, I, and I, maybe I need to find someone else to help me with the that side of things. But I still want to always continue to race because it, it is a lot of joy for me. And, um, one thing that I would, I guess, say the, the way that you guys empower us and Go Power Sports empowers us is, you know, as a race team that is sponsored by Go Power Sports, we are able to be the fastest on the track, look great on the track, yeah. and not only that, but we have a great family back in us too. Yeah. It's like when I drop a video or I do something, you know what I mean? I, I've got you guys sitting here sharing. I got you guys liking it and stuff. You guys pushing us yeah. to keep going and 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 as hard as it gets sometimes that that actually means a lot to us yeah. you know what i mean to have people to give you those words of encouragement and it's great to have people like y'all behind the scenes you know just making this mini bike thing grow i mean it, yeah. it's i don't know like i said I, I never expected to be mini biking to grow as much as it has mm. and that's our hard just because like you said you see a motorcycle or a dirt mm -hmm. bike or why this mini bike well just jump on it and just see i want people just to at least experience that freedom yeah. that a mini bike could be it's very cost effective yeah. as compared to a harley davidson or a race car so i think the more even people or even a dirt bike so i think more people that can have the experience of just getting on one will change their mind and hopefully they come out to one of our events or one of your events and see that wow, this is a family group. Everyone is really cool. Yeah, we like to race, but there's no like bad blood or anything. Oh. The community keeps me going and I just want to see that expand over the US. So I want to empower you and all the other mini bike masons out there in the yeah. US. And I want, to, I want to see more races, Southeast, Northeast, all over the US. So if you guys, if you guys have a mini bike league that you are starting up and you are as dedicated as my man Mason here, leave a comment shoot us an email we would love to empower you guys yeah and i want to say just as an encouragement to people that are trying you know we've been doing this for years now and it started off you know it started off slow man i mean like i said we had two three races a year we were doing and that was it then it started to kind of grow and then we got a race here and it turned out oh this is an annual race so now mm -hmm. it's added another one to the roster i just got done talking with falcons for your harley davidson Connors, georgia mm -hmm. And I just got nine dates secured for the 2024 nice. season. Okay, and um, not a, not just that, but we also have our MKR races. We're going to be racing with Southeast Flat Track and Arma, um, which is another organization that races historic motorcycles on the flat track. Nice. So with that being that, and the 180 again on our 2024 calendar. Mm -hmm. So um, with that, we have a full season next year. Nice. I mean, it is Congrats. amazing, and and we're going to be doing point system across the board. And I think just what has became, I don't want people to see that and think, oh, I can never do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it didn't really start off as that. It started off as, hey, man, it was me and three or four of my buddies barely making Race you class. to the stop sign. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, I'm talking about, it was like, we go to a track and I've begged these people like as a you know promoter of mini bike racing to let us come race. And then we like show up with like three or four people and they're like, this is it this is all y'all like and we're like yeah and then like you know i've like pushed it and pushed it and pushed it and pushed it and then four people show up and i brought them all and i'm like yeah oh my goodness like this is this is gonna be terrible and there's so many times where i was just like man i go hang, hang the hat up dude like people aren't into this they're not into it but then it just one person would come and then another person would come and then he'd bring two buddies yeah and then next thing you know now this season i think at every single flat track race we did with Arma and most of all the flat track races we did with Southeast Flat Track, we were the largest class to come out there. Nice. And these are motorcycles. This yeah. is motorcycle classes. So, wow. It, it, to us, it was amazing. I mean, I, I never expected it. And so now our next journey is to make mini bike racing the number one sport in the world. <laughs> hey, I will back that. That's what's up. I want it televised. I, yeah. I want uh, transponders on everyone. 
I, uh, I'm telling you, man, um, I, I really would love to see the ability for us to track races around the U.S. at the very least and then be able to figure out so that we could start invitational series, start bringing people out. And really, like, I, I want people to be able to look at this as there there's mobility mm. within mini biking, you know, not just the bike itself moving, but also like you can gain recognition within this. This is something that you can pursue. And it really is going to be a result of what you do with your hands, with your mind, because you're the one building the bike. You're the one who's racing it out on the track. I want to see people being able to have something to reach for, man. It, and that's the thing that, that makes mini biking so special is because somebody can literally on their coffee table build something <laughs> that will blow people's yeah. minds on their tv stand on their tv stand. shout out to rick watson <laughs> <laughs> well guys let's give it one sec we're going to throw it back to our sponsors for just oh, a no. minute oh no. my goodness this no. is our sponsor no. Fame Runner. our sponsor john <laughs> from cars and candy <laughs> come crash it yeah, yeah come crash we're gonna go to a quick commercial <laughs> yes we'll be right back <laughs> <laughs> Introducing the ultimate upgrade for your ride, our 10-inch machined aluminum wheels. These five-spoke tubeless wheels are the perfect combination of style and performance, fitted for 6201 bearings and 12 mil axles. The rear wheel includes a mounted brake disc, while the front wheel is brake disc compatible. They offer a sleek and modern look that will turn heads on the road, track, or mud. But don't let their good looks fool you, these wheels are built to perform. With their durable construction and precise engineering, you can trust that these wheels will deliver the power and handling you need to take on any terrain. So why settle for ordinary wheels when you can upgrade to the Go Power Sports 10-inch machined aluminum wheels? Experience the ultimate in style and performance today. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> I'm your host, Jason, with The Quiet Storm. Anyway, Zane, you had something very important you were just talking about. What yeah. was it? So why is the community such an important aspect of the mini bike race scene? Well, I think the community is so important because, man, nowadays with all the social media and stuff like that, I think we're lacking community. I mean, with the all the electronics you have, you think, you know, we're more in touch with the people around us, but we're actually less in touch with the people around us. You know what I mean? You'd be next to somebody in the same room, sitting on the couch with them, and you're completely, you know... Two separate worlds. Two separate worlds. Yeah. And I think the mini bike can really, you know, it, it throws a wrench in that. Because, man, when we're hanging out, when we're mini biking, when we're doing stuff, the only time a phone's out is when someone's taking a picture, a video, making a TikTok or something like that. I mean, you don't see people, you know, so caught up in that. And with the kids, what I'm seeing is... When we go down to MKR, this is a family environment. Almost all the racers there are kids racing these go-karts, and they race modified yard carts yeah. to help with the price point and everything of getting people into the sport. One thing that I've noticed is these kids aren't running around with phones in their hands. They're not running around doing a lot of stuff. They are working on these bikes. They're working on these carts. They're racing, and they're playing in the mud, throwing footballs that we did when we grew up. You know what I mean? And I think that 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 is really good for the sport. Not all kids are a football player, a baseball player, want to be in the band. You got kids that have no outlet and you got to wonder why are these kids so bad? Why is my kid, you know, not paying attention? Why? Because your kid doesn't have an outlet. You know, you have to give them something to focus all that energy on. Yeah. Okay. And as a kid growing up, you know, I had ADHD, man. I had a terrible time trying to pay attention in class, be good, not get in trouble. And it's because I really didn't have an outlet. As yeah. soon as I found I loved football, I played football, I found football and it was like instantly my teachers like, What happened to him? He's he's awesome. It's because I was going to football practice for two or three hours a day and running and getting all and then and then I was coming back in and I was you know I had that outlet and yeah. so you know me me being an uncle uh, I've got nieces and nephews and stuff one of my um, nephews uh, he's about seven eight years old and he just you know came to me not too long ago and he was interested in mini biking 
And I was like, thank you, finally. You know what I mean? Because I've really been waiting for this moment forever. Because, like, I just, like, you know, you can only be a grown man with all these mini bikes for so long without people asking questions. Like that, you know what I mean? Like, so now I was like, okay, who's well, got his kid right here with me? Like, really, this for him. Like, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. It's like my scapegoat. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but, you know, and I love to see it because, like I said, man, um, you know, we've taken shop class out of, uh, of schools. We've taken uh, automotive out of schools. We've taken these hands-on activities out of schools. Kids think they need to go to college to succeed and be successful with the thing is, me being a tradesperson myself, me being an industrial plumber, that is not always the norm is what not, it's not what everyone needs. Well, and I, I think that's the thing. We, we've gotten to a point where you need a degree to get a job because someone put a requirement that you need a degree to get that job. Absolutely. But we don't let people develop any kind of interests that are outside of the curriculum. Yeah. And that's what people need the space. And I think that's why it would be important to bring back some kind of shop class type thing. And even to have like, uh, Jeb Trioni was talking about trying to create like, you know, shop classes for kids to build carts and to build mini bikes so that they can then race them because then it's they're building something and they can see that they can affect change around their environment. When people have that learned helplessness, it gets difficult for them to really try and feel like they own something. Absolutely. And sometimes, you know, coming from somebody that grew up, uh, you know, I would say on the poorer side of, yeah. you know, life as a kid, man, I remember something simple. You just get something and it's yours. Like, this is mine. So you're so proud of it, man. And, yeah. you know, I could just imagine myself if I would have had a mini bike as a kid. I probably would have been out there like waxing it and polishing it. And, you know, like, yeah. you know, just and then, then I'd get on it and just like absolutely destroy it, make it dirty again. Yeah. And I just know that's how I because that's how I was like my bicycle and stuff growing up. You yeah. Know what I mean, I, I just I, I loved, you know, working on my bike and tinkering with it. And one thing about the mini bike and that's super funny is, you know, I got into mini bike and I would say, a, you know, 20 something year old man. Yeah. And. I have learned so much stuff through mini biking. I mean, I learned how to safety wire uh, two weeks ago. I've never safety wired anything in my entire life. Uh, let's, uh, now, let's pretend that I don't know what safety yeah. wiring is. Well, uh, if you know what safety wiring is, it's when you don't want your bolts coming loose, okay? <laughs> but uh, it's, it's usually used in aircraft uh, mechanics and stuff, but um, you know, you drill a hole through the head of your bolt or bolts and um, you use this uh, stainless wire and you go through them and there's a special pair of safety wire pliers. You can go pick those up at your local hardware store or whatever. You crimp it on and you actually just pull this thing and twists it up. And it twists the wire together and it kind of just holds bolt in place. And Oh, I, okay. Yeah, I had a problem. My carburetor wanted to come off um, another bike uh, yeah. when I was doing some 180 testing and I said, nope. I ain't doing. I ain't having that happen. Nah, so no. I safety wired it against each other. So they literally would have to tighten the other one to loosen the other one, and that's. Oh, okay, like, gotcha. Yeah, yeah exactly. Nice and, um, fabrication skills. I mean, man, I learned how to weld in automotive school um, when I was, uh, you know, uh, duly enrolled as a, a college student in high school, and uh, I kind of left the welding there and really didn't learn how to weld very well. And later on, I got you know into the mini bikes, and then I started kind of getting friends i'd take stuff to get it welded and i didn't trust myself with certain things and even with the engine building stuff i would yeah. you know get people to build my motors and stuff like that and just because one thing my dad taught me when i was a kid was sometimes you just do the things you do and pay the man to do what he does yeah and so, especially when you want to be the best you know what i mean yeah. and, and I, I strive to be you know one of the fastest mini bike racers you know on the planet now yeah. Uh, I might not achieve that, but I'm definitely going to try to be there. And uh, but so. you need time to be able to focus on practicing racing yes. and running it. Like you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna build your bike, but you don't have hours to pour into the engine every day. Oh. Not like a guy like Paul does. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, you know. Yeah, I'm actually have a PC motor on my bike for this year. So uh, that's shout also out. why Paul is slow. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> hey, look, I, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> me and Paul did do a drag race last year. <laughs> he got me. <laughs> did he really? Yeah. Wait, really? Yeah, yeah, he did. We we decided we were gonna go on this uh, undisclosed location at the 180 grounds, and uh, oh, okay, we just did like this little drag race because I had the 460, and you know he had his bike, which I don't even know what that was, but I just know this motor was not. So, okay, <laughs> and so uh, we did from a dig, and um, we were like literally neck and neck, and he barely got me at the end. And I was like, no, but he. I think I had double the motor as him, so oh, I mean, yeah. I should not have lost, but you know, the guy, it's what he does, man. He, he builds these motors and he's good at it. He, he, he loves it. Yeah. Like that there's a, there's a light that goes off in that man's eyes when you talk about engines. <laughs> like, Absolutely. I mean, I can't 
say how many times I've called Paul, just like, hey, man, I'm having this issue. Yeah. Have you ever heard of this? You know, becoming a motor builder myself. And I wouldn't say that I'm, you know, any kind of motor builder that's going to be winning any awards. But, you know, I can definitely now take care of my own stuff to a point. And, yeah. and that, like I said, never, ever thought that I would be able to build an engine and put billet parts in there and clearance stuff and yeah. you know, work ahead and never thought I could do that. But it's so funny that mini biking taught me these skills. I mean, you never think that something like that mini bike taught you how to weld, taught you how to fabricate, taught you how to build motors, taught you how to, you know, set stuff up for a three hour endurance race and this and that. And it's just how I had to learn. You know what I mean? Yeah. I tell everybody that gets a mini bike, if you're going to get this thing, if you're going to buy this thing and expect not to work on it, go buy something else. Yeah. Don't buy this because it's going to break down on you. The oh, chain's yeah. going to come off. You're going to have issues. You know, I mean, it's just inevitable if you're riding. Filters. Right yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mini biking ain't easy. It ain't easy. And, and the thing is. That's a good name for a podcast. Heck yeah. You should probably write that down. You know? <laughs> but the thing about it is, is like that part of it, and you've also got the part of like, do you know how tempting it is to get on your website and see all these parts that you have for that specific bike that they may have and then sit here and say, oh, I don't want to buy that and put it on my bike. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> but you don't know how to. Yeah. I mean, and you can call me up, Mini Bike Mason over here, you know, go to the Misfits Garage. I can hook you up if you're yeah. in Georgia. You know what I mean? But if you're not, you're just hanging at the house by yourself, snowed in or whatever it may be over the winter time or something. You can sit there and watch some videos. You can mm -hmm. go to, you know, my YouTube. You go to Rick Watson's YouTube. You can yeah. go check out Cars and Cameras YouTube yeah. and literally find out how to do anything you want to do. Yeah. And, and, and that's the beauty of this and the age that we live in is we have that knowledge at our fingertips. Yeah. We have no excuse not to know how to do yeah. things. Like, how do you not know how to do stuff? Yeah. <laughs> Just a little a YouTube video, right? A five of them. It's, I, I think a lot of people are afraid. Yeah. There's, a, there's a fear of failure. We've created a society that's afraid of failing because yes. then you brand yourself as a failure deep down in your little feels. It's like, you're like, oh, no, I, I messed up. And it's like, no, but that's like the, anyone, who, anyone who's good at anything started off failing at that thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know. I'm going to say eight-year-old Spielberg's eight-millimeter, 16-millimeter films were garbage. Like, oh, yeah. I haven't seen them. Sorry, Steve. My bad. Yeah, he is an avid listener, so. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, yeah, he's like one of the five people who listens to it regularly. <laughs> so, uh, I was wondering, what kind of genre of mini bike can get you the most? Would you say it's flat landing or off-road, just full suspension mini bikes? What do you love the most? Uh that's a that's a very heated question because i would have to say i love off-road racing mm -hmm. off-road racing is i would say the side of me that loves a challenge and that loves to be pushed to my absolute limits physically and mentally loves off-road racing okay but then on the flip side of that flat track racing is my love mm -hmm. because the thing is you can come off and go off-road racing and be a pretty good rider and stuff like that and, you know, have a fast bike and do well, okay, or just get lucky. Yeah. You know, you come out to the 180 and everybody else break down. Yeah. And then you win. You know, I made two laps and I won because everyone else broke yeah. down or whatever, you know. But on the flat track, on the dirt flat track, that is not going to happen. Mm. I have all these people, told, oh, I've raced motocross for this many years. Oh, I've did this for this many years. Oh, I'm a professional. Come race. And they'll come race and they'll come and find out that it's absolutely so hard to do. That it's hard to sit here and find that line of just barely breaking that back tire loose and coming around that corner like a smooth spread of butter. Hmm. That or was just amazing. high side. Sorry, I just wanted to comment. That was an amazing timing because you went like when you break around the corner and then someone downstairs <laughs> just was like squealing something. It was like we could not have planned that better. I thought it was the soundboard at first. Oh, that would have been perfect. So you yeah. love off-road racing, but you love flat tracking the most. That's like your number one. Yeah, I would definitely say that's my number one just because, uh, like I said, the skill that, that comes with it, and not just the skill, but the setup. I mean, you can come out with a really, really good, you know, background in racing and not have the right setup on a flat track and just do terribly bad. 
But when it comes to off road racing, if you're just nuts, dude, you might win. Like, <laughs> like you know, Austin. I think it was Austin Murphy um, in the first Go Power Sports on eighty. Him and his girlfriend on a doodle bug with small oh, yeah. tires. Yeah. Okay, it only had a a seat made out of a pair of pants, and they had the the the, the back pocket on there. That's where he kept his tools at. Yeah. On the seat, you know, I had a, had literally had a wooden fender on it. I remember this. Okay, these guys came in first place in the hardtail. Yeah. Super fast. I on got a little of bitty bike. Yeah. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. It does. It shows that, hey, man, the setup, it doesn't matter. It does. Yeah. But it's almost like just the cojones. Like, if, you are, if you're willing to send it, like, you know what I'm Send it. <laughs> you know, if you're willing to send it, then, you, hey, man, you can win. Yeah. I mean, and, and like I said, that out on our track, on the, on the dirt track, it's just not like that, man. It's, it's you know, you need to come practice. You got to feel that track. You got to get the right amount of air pressure in your tires. You have to have the right tires. Like, don't want K1A. It goes up to GoPowerSports.com. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do, so you said, you know, come race. How yeah. does someone come find? Do you have a race schedule posted somewhere? Is it just Facebook? Yes, sir. Yeah, what we do is um, we have, we've got a website. You can go check us out at www.minibikerace.com. Okay? Minibikerace.com. We'll go ahead and yes, throw sir. that down in the description as well. And, yeah. um. We, we what we have on there is we have our uh, schedule right now the 2023 20, schedules up but I'm fixing to get the whole entire 2024 schedule updated and gone through and everything and what we're gonna have is we're gonna have event times locations dates all that stuff on there and they can also contact me directly if they have any questions at all how well uh, the best way to contact me is my phone number at 404 uh, just kidding I, just, just, <laughs> I was like just playing no no no, no. Um, uh, you know you can find me um, on my website there there is a, a an option there to be able to send me an email to my email directly you can also hit me up on Facebook I'm Mason Pittman on Facebook or you can hit us up right here Misfits Racing we're also there on uh, Facebook too we have a page and like I said I, I run all that so they can contact me on any of those ask any questions um, like I said I'm super open like a book uh, you know, I want people to come out and beat me. I do. I okay. mean, I want competition. I mean, if you think you got it, come show me you got it. You know what I mean? Nice. We're calling out everybody. Good. I, I like love it. that. I'm all over. That's good. It's, you know a, I mean? it's, a, it's a friendly take trying to get everyone up and riled up yeah. about something. If you think you're fast, come, let's, let's, let's see yeah, it. Yeah, I'm telling you. that's that. I think the world's missing uh, some good competition, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, we're all friendly, but and clean, yeah, yeah some yeah. clean competition. It's yeah, not, yeah. it's not a, it's not a zero sum thing, you know. It's like you might, really, and that's what's great about having a race schedule is that you might lose at one race, but you still have yeah. another chance. You can still train for something. There's something to per to push yourself to to achieve. Yeah. So I have some people that race with me. Their 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 only goal is to beat me. That's it. They don't even care if they come in first. Like, I just want to beat you. Like, you know what I mean? That's awesome, though. And yeah. It, it, and it, it feels great to me, but it also puts a lot of pressure on me. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Like, yeah. I was going to say, I, I was going to ask you about that giant target on your back that you've got. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, last I think the last race we raced at MKR, there was a $200 bounty on my head. Oh, nice. really? I mean, yeah. And I lost Two. my chain three times in the, oh. in the heat race. Hmm. And I was like, I am fixing that to pay some people's money. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so yeah. you, you love a challenge, obviously, with off-roading, flat landing. Would you do drag racing like just street drag like eighth mile 330 whatever quarter mile i i love drag racing that is something i also love to do uh, okay you know when i when i was younger i had an r1 and i love nice. that thing um you know one liter bikes got a lot of power and you know a lot of get up and go and you just gotta you know go fast the straight lines fun you know what i mean and the only thing that's kept me from really getting into the mini bike drag racing world as mini bike Mason and myself is the fact that I'm 225 pounds. Mm. And when we know these mini bikes, man, power, power weights, everything, not yeah. just with mini bikes, any kind of racing. Yeah. And, uh, so we found out that Kinsey really likes to do that. But so we've said, okay, well, Kinsey's our drag racer, you know, nice. at a hundred and you know, like maybe 10 pounds or whatever she's at, you know, we have a, you know, a lot of bigger of advantage, not just that, but you know, she's got a great reaction time. And so I've kind of just, took the back seat when it comes to the drag race and stuff and kind of gave her mm. the you know full spotlight on that because first of all you know hot chicks on bikes get likes yeah, yeah. but that's a common <laughs> thing just so you know that when every time you're with a drag racing drag racer it's always a it's always a, a team someone building the bike mm -hmm. or the engine sometimes both yeah. and then you have a jockey it just kind of it yeah. seems yeah. like it's a two, at least a two-man team well I, from you know doing the misfits thing i found out the team is everything i mean 
by myself, I could have never did this. Mm -hmm. Never. And I will never, ever take the credit fully for doing this. Now, have I put in more hours than a lot of other people on the team? Absolutely. But, you know, the thing is, without those people, it wouldn't be here, man. Yeah. I mean, a, a good team is is essential to growth, is essential to success. And I got to say, you know, uh, one of my guys on my team, for instance, Too Tall, right? He came out here for the second time for the Go yeah. Power Sports 180. And uh, he is the best pit man on this side of the Mississippi and our side, okay? <laughs> so that's what he is. He's, Tim, he's, Tim's a stand-up dude, yeah. He, yeah, and, and like, I'm telling you, man, I mean, he, he's, he's great. Last year, he, he was so good in the pits. He made sure that we had the tools, we had water, bananas, anything we needed. I mean, nice. he took care of us, and you just, like I said, we couldn't have did what we did last year without him. We couldn't mm -hmm. have. And uh, so this year, again, he said, I'm coming out again. And we built him a crazy awesome MP200. Nice. He literally had a Go Power Sports box at his, like, door almost every week. <laughs> I mean, just <laughs> he's just re the, there's nothing there that's stock except the Good. frame. Okay? Mm -hmm. And yeah. actually, that's not stock either because we cut gusseted it and, and gusseted and it and <laughs> moved the split yeah. peg. So uh, nothing stock on the bike. Yeah. And um, I was like, well, are you going to race it, Tim? And he's like, no, man. I got y'all, man. You and Dakota? We're winning. Nice. And I was just like, dude, oh, heck yeah, nice. man. And, so, and, you know, and I, that's something I really respect, you know, because yeah. just like with a team, a team's like a body. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? You can't have five heads. Yeah. You know what I mean? You need arms, legs, fingers, yeah. toes. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you need every part of the body for the body to function like a body. Mm -hmm. And that's, everyone needs another their spot and needs another place in that body. And I think that I have made a great team you know what i mean and i i didn't really make it on purpose it kind of just happened yeah just random misfits floating around and we just scooped them up and <laughs> brought them on board and you know we've had people leave and people come and you know and we've now got this team that's pretty stationary of just, just some really stand-up people man and if you were to do mini bike drag racing would you ride a go power sports drascal actually that would be my preferred bike because what a, what a convenient oh, segue. Right I don't know how you expect me to pay attention to you or the <laughs> podcast with this beautiful thing sitting here, but... So this is prototype A or prototype B, because there's another one mm -hmm. out there with a, that might be a little lighter, a little different design on it, but essentially, this is our rascal frame that's been extended. It has the dual down tubes. It, we've cut so much weight in the triple trees in the rear. You can do it as a live axle setup back here or you can just run it with a, a regular you know uh, i think a mega moto 80 wheel fits right in there if you wanted to go that route we had the engine mount that's already set up if you wanted to run a torque converter like a 30 series torque converter your money if you want to run a bully clutch you're already money this setup can be done as a drag bike or like our number 10 honest abe as like a a, a cruiser uh, yeah what was the name we had for it slammed slammed there you go thank you wordsmith yeah that's how you keep me around so, and then you got multiple peg placements for for cruising, multiple pe peg placements in the rear for different drag race setups. Uh, this is a, a fully module bike. Yeah, I see that. And I even see we got some, some setup on the back. Was that for a fender? On the you back can here? do fenders. You can yeah. also run a uh, drag bar, the oh, wheelie bar. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be sweet, especially with our new gas tank we have mm -hmm. coming out. Yes, we definitely need to get you set up for mini bike drag racing if you think you'll do it. Hey, well, um, and especially if you're going to be out here for the GPS 660. <laughs> Big reveal. <laughs> <laughs> if things go right, hopefully we'll be. So we have the GPS 180. So now the GPS 660, which is an eighth mile yeah. drag race, the end of March 2024. Mm -hmm. I don't know what your race schedule looks yeah. like, but when you get you a frame, you need to throw on one of Paul's engines or one of your engines yeah. on one, and we would love for you to come out. I'm definitely going to need one of those like big 263s. Okay, let's get put it on the books. Get my you know what I yeah. mean? Nice, man. And we'll, and we'll give McKinsey a... <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to tell you the, the, the best thing about me is I'm absolutely not scared at all. Like, okay. Like, zero fear. Like, okay. you know what I mean? So, um, if I could have a rocket ship to ride, I'd love to, you know? Would you ever go a hundred miles an hour on a drag bike? That's it. Oh, oh I like it. <laughs> Within like an eighth mile, because you got to get there. There's no airstrip. Like you just gun yeah. in and go. Uh, dude, I'm trying to go as fast as I can. Okay. I'm, I'm not putting a top on it. Okay. If it's a Go Power Sports bike, first of all, I know it's built well. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not too worried about it coming apart on me. And then, you know, secondly, man, um, if I go, if I die going fast, man, that's the way I wanted to go. Okay. <laughs> well, how fast have you gone? 
Are we or talking, think you've gone on a mini bike? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fastest you've gone on a mini the bike. Fastest I've ever been on a mini bike. I, I guess in the end of everything would be uh, probably around seventy miles an hour on the yeah. flat track. And wow. the, it is the funny thing is, you know, I've never really sh- stretched out a mini bike like land speed record wise to see yeah. how fast I can make one go. And you know, I've done that while building bikes and yeah. things. And I think the first ever bike I built, which I told you about earlier, when I raced all my buddies on Doodlebug, I think I did fifty miles an hour, fifty five on it or whatever. And I was like so stoked to do that, but. On the flat track, I had my GPS um, in my coveralls, uh, and we were going around the track, and I took it out, and I looked at it, and I was like, this is wrong. And, and I, I just reset it and everything right before I went out, so it was, wasn't going down the road speed, no highway speed. You weren't in kilometers. 71 miles an hour. Bang. And I was like, there's no way. And so I did my, did my gearing, put it all in the calculator, and then I checked out my RPMs on my tack, and it... 71 miles an hour. Nice. And I'm like, well, you know, there's the proofs in the pudding, dude. Yeah. I just did 71 miles an hour on a quarter mile track. That's the mini bike. Up. Very nice. Sorry, I was I wanted to get it. Um, but we have another guest here in the studio stopping by, Mr. Rick Watson, oh, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Please come on out, Rick. Oh, no, I'm not crashing the party. How's it going? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Daddy style. No, you can't. We can't just drop <laughs> okay, that. No one's sorry. seen the episode yeah, go yet. Ahead and blur. <laughs> I'm gonna blank that out. <laughs> Um, okay, so I think we've, uh, we're getting close to the end, uh, but I just want to ask for the words of wisdom for people, like what can a person do to promote mini bike racing? If they're, if there's someone who's like you, they want to be the fastest and they want to find out who the other fast people are so that they can beat those people. How can someone organize a race in their town or how can they get in touch with you to help them organize a race? Well, first of all, you need to get some friends. Okay. Because... If you can get just a few dudes together, yeah, or even dudes and chicks, you know what yeah. I mean. That's all. It's that's how you start it. Okay. I mean, you know, it says it in the Bible where where one or more are gathered. You know what I mean. Yeah. Mini yeah. biking will happen. Okay. <laughs> so just Philippians get it. five. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just I'm telling you, just just get some good people together and around you. And I've had a lot of people um, come to me and say, Mason, look, man, I'm hanging it up. I'm done. You know what I mean. Uh, I've tried to build this mini bike sport in my state, in my area. It's not happening. I just did an event. No one came. I'm giving it up, dude. You make it look so easy. You have all these people having all this fun with you. And I said, dude, stop right there. I said, this is something that has came over time, something that was built, man. You can't sit here and look at a finished house and think, you know, I want that. And like, you know, with some Home Depot wood in the back of your truck, you know, you have to build it stick by stick. You got to build that. And I told him, I said, look, man, do you know how many times I built every bike that was on a track? Do you know how many times I was grabbing people like, come race, please. You know what I mean? Just be a body on this track for me. I don't care if you do too. Like just go around the track and you know, there's so many times that I faked it till I made it. I mean, I mean, that's 100%. Almost all of the beginning was faking it, dude. Like we just acted like we were all just coming together, having this big time. And it was just like me begging people to come like, wow. you know, and then, but people saw that people saw us having fun. They're like, Oh my God, you guys are having so much fun. I want to do that. And that's all you got to do. Just get together with your friends, promote the fun you're having and the people, they will come. Yeah. You know what I mean? And once you do that, like I said, uh, talk shoot out to some people talk to some people you would be really really surprised at how welcoming tracks in your area might be because they're making that money yeah every head that comes through that gate they're making money the same people that laughed at me when i first tried to come to their tracks four five six years ago or whatever they're now begging me to come and do a series at their track they're like make our track part of your series because they know we're bringing 15 20 people yeah they're like, man, you know, I want all that money, yeah. yeah. You know, and so now it's something that's coming so much, so much more respected. Because when we first pulled up, I felt like a clown. I was like, okay, okay. you know, what I mean, like here I am with this little mini bike, and you got people on four fifties and hooligan like Harleys and stuff out there running ninety miles an hour on a flat track. And they're looking, what are you about to do on that big boy? And then I come out there and run sixty something miles an hour, and they're like, dude, I want one. That's you know what I mean. And that's all it takes, man. You know, proofs in the pudding. You know, you just, like I said, just just keep keep pushing, keep driving, and wrestle. It'll do itself, man. Yeah. I don't see how it could not grow because a lot of those people who do have a Harley in their race, and they can easily fit a mini bike in that trailer somewhere, and you can race in two classes. Absolutely. So, and very yeah. affordably at that. Very you know affordably. I mean? We have a stock class. Uh, you know, you can come in. 
Um, you know, you can go pick up you a, a stock motor. Um, you know, from Go Power Sports, you get you one of them Stage One yeah. Tillies with a with the governor still in it. Yeah, and that is completely uh, you know raceable in our stock class. Okay, uh, and so what we want to do is we want to make that you know opening you know jump to getting into mini biking very affordable mm -hmm. and not like you're just coming out there with me with your stock coleman and i'll make blowing your doors like you know and you're like oh i'm never coming out here again like yeah. you know what i mean because i think that's one of the biggest things that turns people away is that they come out there and like you said earlier they're scared of failure man they don't want to come out there and get lapped three times by mckenzie yeah, it makes them feel terrible on the inside. But I have to understand. Like, tell me, look, man. You but Mackenzie loves it. She just <laughs> loves lapping people, man. She's just killing it. <laughs> the last time we raced on a big track, it was you know about a month and a half ago. Uh, we were on a quarter mile track, and uh, you know we're out there racing. We had some dudes that did motorcycle road racing and stuff come out there with us, and uh, you know I was expecting you know just some absolute heat from everybody, except and I don't want to you know put it past Kenzie, but. Man, like I said, I was running 70 miles an hour. And I look to my left as I'm coming around turn three over here, and someone's passing me, and it's McKenzie. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, I got to get on it. Like, you know what I mean? And uh, so because she'd already did that to me one time on a big track in mm -hmm. Cherokee, North Carolina. And uh, we actually have right above our mantle a huge, big, like, Jim Dolmes photography professional picture of her and her pigtails flying in front of all of us and nice. she beat us in Cherokee, North Carolina. Nice. And, uh, That's awesome, man. Yeah, dude. And ever since then, I'm telling you, I've never put anything past her because I was like, we need to watch out for this chick, you know? We yeah. need to get Mackenzie on the podcast, okay? Oh yeah, we should. Yeah. That's right. a great idea. Yeah. I mean, right. she, uh, I gotta say, she's a little shy, but once you get her opened up, man, you know what I mean? She, she's uh, pretty interesting. I gotta say, she's got a wonderful view on the world and mini biking in general. And I gotta say, uh, you know, none of this that I've ever that I've done in any of this would have been possible without her. Um, you know, I haven't gave her, you know, really a big shout out the whole time I've been on here. But I gotta say that uh, you know, good woman by your side, uh, it's yeah. it's key, you know what I mean? Or or just a good spouse in general, you know. It just by your side, man. Um, you know, you can do a lot of good things and, and she's pushed me, man. I mean, you don't know how many times I could have actually been dead, been on the first forty eight or something like that. Like, cause I brought home too many mini bikes. I've, <laughs> you know, just, I, I mean, I just don't know how she's so cool. Like, you know, I mean, just, like I said, you walk down in, in my basement, go in the shop and you're just like, look at all these bikes, dude. Yeah. But it, the funny thing is that some of the bikes, when people come over, they're like, oh my God, I love that one. Well, that's Kinsey's. They're like, yeah. what about that one? That's Kinsey's. Kins what about that? That's Kinsey's. Like, you know, <laughs> so. Well, on that wonderful note, we're going to let everyone know that the couples that mini bike together stay together. We want to give a huge shout out to you for coming out on the podcast and taking the time just to yeah. talk to us. We want to wish you a huge good luck <laughs> at the GPS 180 running coming up this weekend. Yes, sir. And uh, I guess I want everyone to like, subscribe. If you have any comments for Mason, if you want to find anything, we'll put it down in the description. Leave a comment if you have a comment for him. I'm sure he'll definitely be trolling it. Uh, riding back anyone yeah. who wants to fight them in a race. Yeah. If anyone's any, if anyone's interested in trying to start events in your area, reach out to us, reach out to Mason. Uh, there's resources available because we want to see this community grow. We want we want to help you help yourself. Yes. So like the gap, yeah. So like, subscribe, and as always, ride on. You are the man. Thank you. Good killing it, brother. Man. Killing yeah. it. Oh no, you left me. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> we'll blow it up. <laughs> fart, fart Thank sound. You guys. Appreciate you. Fart, 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 fart sound. <laughs> Yo, thank you guys for having me on the show, man. Interesting.